please help me in welcoming Tilda Swinton. Tilda, thank you for coming back to Marrakesh. You've been here a number of times. And I remember last year was quite, um, it was a poignant moment. You received the Tribute Award and there was a surprise at the ceremony. Your daughter, Honor, was there to give you that prize. And um, it's just, it's one of the special moments that I've experienced in Marrakesh. And I'm wondering, why do you return to this festival? I love this festival. I love the people who run the festival. Um, and the films are extraordinary. I mean, literally extraordinary. There's nowhere else so far to, f to find this kind of portal into a kind of filmmaking from a corner, or not even corner, but a section of the globe that doesn't often get this kind of attention. But mainly, I would say, I love the audience here. There's something about the youth of the audience here and the cine literacy of the audience here that's, there's a purity and uh, yeah, I love it. I, I'll come and come and come again. Wonderful, we love having you here. And I agree that the audience is very open and curious and generous. But to go back again to last year, you were also here with Joanna Hoggs, the eternal daughter. Joanna's on our jury, we're very happy to have her. And in that film, um, there was something that I felt that was so extraordinarily powerful because the film is great. You play this dual role, but it felt imbued with a lifetime's work of trust and love. The Eternal Daughter is um, a very particular, talking of portals, it's a very particular kind of zone for me because Joanna Hogg is the first filmmaker I ever, I ever worked with. She's actually, apart from people I'm related to by blood, the person I've known longest in my life. We first met when I was 10, she was 11, on the first day of a really traumatic school uh, experience which lasted for nearly a decade, but we kept each other afloat. I mean, in, in more ways than one. And when I look back on the conversations that led to The Eternal Daughter, which is the last film that we made together, it's just opened in the UK. I mean, it is fresh off the press, if you like. Um, and it's a film that I made with the first filmmaker I ever worked with, and the last film I ever made. It is also a film made out of conversations that we've been having since I was 10. It's about our sort of magical confusion about our mothers <laughs> and um, the mystery of our mothers. And so to work with someone who you know that well, uh, who you've worked with for that long, through all those decades and all those evolutionary turns is, is quite phenomenal. And for many years I said that the first filmmaker I ever worked with was Derek Jarman. And then I remembered, no, the first filmmaker I ever worked with was Joanna. And I don't just mean her graduation film, Caprice, um, which we made in 84, I think. Uh, but I mean the conversations we were having when we were children were, I believe, filmmakers' conversations. You know, we both were very alienated and, and observant. And to share th this kind of observational uh, position with someone. Before we get there, I also want to talk about the renewed interest in Orlando, which was a, a big role for you. And uh, Sa Sally Potter's film was recently restored last year, and uh, more people have seen it. There have been several Orlando films, the Ulrika Ottinger, Paul B. Preciado's film came out this year, and it's part of the discourse, and I feel like it's maybe even more relevant now than it was. Can you say a bit about Orlando? Yes, uh, Orlando, I can't believe, is 30 years old. And I, whenever I see it, it feels fresher than ever. And certainly in terms of the context in which it was made, it, I mean, yeah, it, it, I mean, but we're talking about a book written in 1928, which was, you know, the, the, the beacon uh, by Virginia Woolf, her masterpiece. That holds the key, really, to an absolutely supersonic, uh, it's, I mean, I, I suppose what I'm thinking is when we, when we tried to raise money for Orlando, Sally Potter and Christopher Shepard and I, for a long, when we thought five years was a long time, I now realize, having worked with uh, 
Luca Guadagnino and uh, uh, all sorts of people. That that's not long, but, you know, I Am Love took us 12 years. And actually, I just made a film last year with my friend Cynthia Beat that we started talking about in 1986. So I, I have no problem with the long, long gestation. For me, it's, it's grace. But um, we, when we were asking people to support this film and they said, you know, what's it about? And we said, well, it's about class and history and, you know, boundarylessness and England and internationalism and, uh, you know, the, the democracy and a kind of radical project. And they said, yeah, but what's it about? And we would say, well, it's about class and England and internationalism. And, 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 and then the whole question of, of sex change, which, to be honest with you, I don't really think is in Orlando the book and not really that interesting in the film. Uh, because I don't think Virginia Woolf and Sally and I are not particularly interested in, you know, gender bending. Uh, for my fantasy about Orlando the book is that if Orlando, had, if it had been maybe another hundred pages, Orlando might, might have turned into a spaniel or a bottle of water. Or it's about freedom and it's about boundarylessness. Um, but now the dialogue is so fresh and so important. The whole idea of binariness is becoming properly dissolved. And yeah, Orlando, Virginia Woolf first, Sally Potter and me next. We've been, you know, pushing that up the hill and it's, it's found a moment. You've worked with such different filmmakers as well, many of whom have really strong visions and visual styles. So getting back to the frame and the mise-en-scene, when I think of you in a Wes Anderson film and how you perfectly fit his world, and then the man from London, a Bella Tarr, who has an aesthetic that could not be more different. Can you talk about embodying those mise-en-scene? Yeah, it's a particular sort of private pleasure of mine. Uh, and it's such grace in my life that these extraordinary artists whose work I've, some of, who, some of them whose work I know really well before I even meet them, like, Pedro Almodovar or, or Bellatar or Wes Anderson or Jim Jarmusch, all filmmakers whose work I really worshipped and felt I knew very well. I knew the atmosphere, the different, completely distinct worlds that they drum up and, and uh, for, to be invited into them. It's like uh, there's an element of cosplay about it because one is stepping in and I, you know, what, what you see of my work with Joanna and, and Joey Apichatpong and Derek is very close to my own kind of temperature and my own bathwater, if you like. But to step into those worlds always feels to me, having said what I've said about acting, it does require a, a level of disguise and a level of, um, you know, going into the slipstream of somebody else's energy, somebody else's country, um, somebody else's uh, entire aesthetic. And so it is a sort of game I play with myself. You know, I do remember when I worked with Bellatar, I could not believe it. He would set up, because he'll set up these incredibly long takes, um, and we would set them up over the course of a day with um, the music in, you know, in situ and the camera who is the star, of course, the camera is always the star, moving, 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 and then the point would come when one would step into the frame, and I remember the first time I looked at any playback, I could not believe that I was in a Bellatar frame. It was such a thrill, I'm such a geek. Um, and the same is true to a certain extent with, with the others I've mentioned, you know, to be in a, how could I fit into a Wes Anderson film, or, or for that matter, a Jim Jarmusch film, but they've been so gracious and and wanted to play. I will invite you to do that retrospective, do the it. Cinematheque in Toronto. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Thank you so much. I have a couple of people I have to thank. I would like to thank Jacqueline, who ran the clips for us. I'd like to thank Olivia for her help, Xavier, and Masume, who was doing live translation during this entire time. Thank you so much. But first and foremost, thank you so much for your generous answers and elegance, Tilda. Thank you. Thank you.